Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, gentlemen, we're going to be talking about heirlooms. I'm going to give you an introduction to heirlooms. I'm going to give you a little bit of a story of one of my favorite heirlooms that is property of the United States. And then I'm going to give you three tips on how you can start to create heirlooms in your family. Now, the definition of heirlooms, and I believe it is of British terminology, is defined it's a movable property that can be inherited through an estate. But I don't think that really does justice to an heirloom. An heirloom to me is about connection. It's something that's valuable beyond the actual function of the item. So let me go ahead and start off with a story. I think it was 1852 that the HMS Resolute left England. It was on a, a search mission up near the North Pole. Ends up getting stuck in ice and it has to be abandoned. Three years later, that ship is found uh, off of the coast of New England and it is sold to the U.S. Congress. The U.S. Congress decides, and at this point, there's about the third war between England and the United States is about to break out. We are not on good terms uh, with those guys over there, and it's the Congress sees this as an opportunity. So they take the ship, they spend about thirty to forty thousand dollars, they rebuild the ship, and they sail it over to England. They present it as a gift to Queen Victoria. The English are just ecstatic. They love it. Such a great gesture of goodwill. And we avert, in fact, after that, we became great friends. Our two countries have been working together pretty well ever since. Now, in 1880, the ship was decommissioned and Queen Victoria had it built or had the timbers taken out and she created four desks. One of them was the Resolute Desk, which was given to, given to President Hayes in at that time period, about 1880, and has remained the desk of the president on and off. There have been you know, stories of it going in and out of storage and traveling with JFK uh, with his museum and stuff. But you know, currently, right now, it sits in the Oval Office and is the president's desk. And I, there's a picture, I think, of Jimmy Carter and Margaret Thatcher you know, looking at the, uh, you know, everything that's right there on the desk. But I think that's a pretty darn cool story that you have something that you know is the desk of the president and it has a story that goes back to you know 1852 and the timbers that were used to make it so that really has become an heirloom of my country now i say my country because i don't have any personal family heirlooms there's nothing that's been passed to me my uh, my grandmother on my mom's side was an orphan um, my father came over from Guanajuato, mexico with basically you know not much i mean just the, what he could carry and so there hasn't been a whole lot of history in my family. Why I get excited about heirlooms is the idea that you can pass on history through an object. Instead of just written word or stories, history and function, I mean, something beautiful like that. And I get really, uh, I don't know, to me, it, don't, don't you find that interesting? I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. But the qualities of an heirloom are it's going to have connection. It's going to have purpose. It's going to have some type of use where it can replace a generic item. So that's why you see furniture oftentimes are heirlooms. You see art as being an heirloom. You see jewelry as being an heirloom. So these are things that can pass through time and in a sense can grow in value but still have a functional purpose for years and years. Now, I promised I'm going to give you guys three tips on how you can start to create your own heirlooms within your family because I'm doing this myself. So number one is think about the future need. Is this something that has been proven and is going to be able to be passed on from generation to generation? So this is important because you know, taking your iPhone and maybe you know getting that gold iPhone or something. Honestly, that's probably not going to be an heirloom because technology is not something that is held up well over time. However, furniture, jewelry, getting some really nice cufflinks, getting something that your son, your grandson, your great grandson would be able to wear with their shirt, I think is a pretty safe bet. Watches have been something that people, for time and time again, have used. You know, it has changed a little bit, but. If you actually got a you know a handheld um, you know watch or or you got something maybe a uh, a certain type of timepiece or a clock that is now a piece of furniture, you could find a place for that in your house. And so I think it needs to be something that is going to have you know there's going to be a future need for it. So point number two is quality build. Again, that's why furniture, jewelry, artwork. A lot of this stuff uses very high quality pieces that can stand the test of time. So let's look at jewelry. 
I mean, jewelry is an excellent heirloom because silver, gold, stones, and precious metals, all of this, you know, they can stand the test of time and it doesn't really matter. I mean, you go back thousands of years, men and women were using jewelry. It's going to be something we're going to use again in the future. And point number three, I like if I'm going to pass something on for it to have a story. For some reason, for, for me to maybe even have a hand in building it. Personally, I'm kind of getting into furniture. I think woodworking is a very noble craft, something that's fallen to the wayside here in the United States. My friend Pete Sveen over at DIY Pete, he's actually building furniture. We're talking about, you know, I'm going to probably stop over and see him over in Montana again. And to me, to be able to build furniture and to be able to pass that on, especially when we're in a world in which, I mean, IKEA is cool. But the problem with that furniture is it's not going to stand up to the test of time and it's not going to be something you can pass on when if you actually took the time to learn to build something or to have your hand in it or maybe to spend a bit more and to buy high level quality, I think that that's worth it if you are wanting to introduce heirlooms into your family. Let me know what you guys think. So, uh, this is going to fit more into my travel and living section over at Real Men Real Style. I'll have an article accompanying it, which I'll link to down below. But I would love to hear from you guys. What do you consider to be great family heirlooms? Maybe you've got a story of a family heirloom that's been passed to you. I'd love to hear it. See you in the comments. Take care. Bye.